life comes at you fast when you hit 40, and that is the focus of our next segment. Arthur Brooks is exploring what happens when hard-charging professionals start to feel a sense of decline. Something he says happens much sooner than most of us think. The drop-off may be inevitable, but a loss of purpose doesn't have to be. So what's the best way to address it besides eating lettuce and going outside and maybe some meditating? Joining us now, oh, Arthur that. Brooks. Like He's a contributing I'm writer for surprised. The Atlantic. He's I'm writing about this, the author yeah. of the new book, From Strength to Strength, Finding Success, Happiness, and Deep Purpose in the Second Half of Life. And you say, Arthur, that second half starts at 40? Well, it starts at different times for different people. The truth of the matter is that the second half of your adult life probably starts around 55. If you live to 90 and 20 is when you start your adult life, 55 is the midpoint. The, but the problem is that a lot of people think that their happiness is just going to take care of itself. Right. And, and it, it doesn't. I, you know, I teach this subject at Harvard University, and I've been doing the research on how people can actually and remarkably change the odds of getting happier as the years go by. And there's seven s secrets in this book on, on what the happiest people do as they get older. You know, uh, Arthur, uh, we, um, uh, Meek and I, over the past several years, for a lot of different reasons, uh, have uh, had family members that have used DBT. So we've actually focused some, tried to do mindfulness, uh, tried to yeah. look at the world differently, uh, tried to look at uh, our, things our emotions differently, and it is really sure. remarkable when you, when you adjust your thinking, yeah. when you take on board things like radical acceptance and the fact that two things can be true at the same time and, and, and focus more on your mindfulness. It is, you know, I know it's a big thing when, when my kids are going, uh, Dad, what, what's happened to you over the past couple of years? You're like, really? Uh, you're Much getting more chill. mellow in the house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, my kids too. And the truth is that this book is the fruit of eight years of research for me as a social scientist, because I mean, this is me search, not research. And, and the first big thing to keep in mind is that, that your real success curve is in the second half, if you know how to jump onto it. You know, the things that made you really good in the first half are not what make you good in the second half. We all need to go from kind of the innovator mindset to the instructor mindset. So you two are really doing it right. Every morning you're teaching people about interesting things around the world, but everybody can do that. And that's the first thing is to get from the first curve to the second curve. And that's the big, one of the big, big things I talk about in this book. So Arthur, at what point does this, how does this settle in? You say like the first one is beat the success addiction. At what point in a person's yeah. life can you say, all right, I think I'm happy with where I am. Not that I've plateaued, but that I can stop being obsessed yeah. with success. Well, that's the that's actually a huge battle that people have to fight over the course mm -hmm. of their lives. What yeah. makes them really good at what they do, that they, they want more and they want more. It's kind of, you know, we're like, you know, monkeys on cocaine when it comes to success in any part of our life. Yeah. You want to hit the lever and hit the lever over and over again. And look, here's the key thing. Here's one of the key uh, uh, habits that the happiest people have when they get older. They stop adding and they start subtracting. They basically start, in, instead of like using your, your life as a canvas that you're painting on, you start seeing your life as a, as a sculpture that you're chipping away to find the true parts of yourself. Take away the extraneous attachments, possessions, relationships to find the real beautiful piece of art that's within you. That's a key thing that you need to do to jump on this second curve. The success addiction just gets in the way of that. The success addiction is all this junk that's on your canvas. It makes it impossible to see yourself. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Uh, Michael Steele. Yeah, hey, Arthur, it's good to see you, man. So I, I, I yeah, get the, how are you? The, I'm great, bro. It, it's, uh, I get the piece about uh, success, the job, career, and all of that. Yeah. But in, in, in pulling out that, that better half uh, of your life uh, going forward, you got other people around you. And it kind of goes to what yeah. Joe was saying. You know, while Joe and, and, and Mika and myself and you and others are at this point where we want to do that, you still have people like whirling dervishes around you. How do you account yeah. for others yeah. who may actually be a drag in trying to help yeah. you get to that space where you're like, you know, I'm just doing me, boo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and, <laughs> and, but this is the key thing that all happy people who are older that they, that they realize that you can have tons of people around you. You can have lots of friends, 
But there's a difference between deal friends and real friends. And this is what you have to figure out in the second part of your life. The whole first part of your life is more deal friends, more deal friends. You need real friends. If you get to age 55 or 60 and all you've got is deal friends, I don't care how many people around you, you're going to be lonely. And the mm. happiest people actually concentrate on their real friendships, not just on their deal friendships. This is a key skill to getting That's older. That's a good one. Yeah, let's That's go to John one. Heilman. You, uh, you said monkeys on Deal cocaine friend. and his uh, ears yeah, perked up. That was, yeah, like, Hello. <laughs> that was the name of his favorite band in, singing, in high school. You're singing my song. Arthur, are you saying, are, I just want to be clear, monkeys on cocaine is not like the way to happiness. Though. You you're saying that as a, as no, a kind of mode. Right? Yeah. right? I, I, yeah, no, if that's, look, if I if that's not this. the way, then I'm screwed. <laughs> You, well, you, look, your results may vary, but still, I mean, look, the, the, <laughs> the bigger force of the data says that, look, make your root system around real people, calm down, simplify, get on your teacher curve and off your, you know, get into your, your Dalai Lama curve as opposed to your Elon Musk curve. And, and look, there's seven things in this book that, that show that, you know, how the happiest people do it step by step by step. And, and here's the thing, you know, I'm eating my own cooking. I'm taking my own advice and I'm getting happier by the year. I wrote this thing over eight years. And I didn't even want to publish it. My wife said, you got to share this thing. Yeah. And sure enough, it actually works. I mean, I'm, I'm using my own toolkit. It's like taking out my own appendix as a surgeon. Um, yeah, yeah. no, mm. we, we don't want okay. you to do that. Yeah, 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 Arthur. that. You know, Arthur, uh, there's a lot. Of, it's so interesting. Uh, many years ago, um, I'd had back problems. I had back surgery in my early 30s and was going to have another surgery and a guy that ran a hospital a very conservative uh i don't know if i'd call him a monkey on cocaine but but he he was like he was really intense and then he just stopped for a second and it's like something came over him and he said joe we haven't gotten there yet but but east is going to meet west soon and i'm telling you yeah. every time somebody cuts into your body it's it's it, it's like, you know, and he's I don't know, he made some analogy with rivers and parting the waters. And it was yeah. so bad thing, basically. But he he was saying, be still and just wait uh, and, and you'll probably do much better. And I've got to say, it was some of the best advice I got. I'm, I'm, it's I, life advice. It, it was life advice. But what you're talking about here, again, for uh, conservative guys like me, it's interesting. Um, again, East meets West with a lot of this philosophy. When you're you're talking about mindfulness, you're talking about the sort of things that you're talking about uh, that that we need to move beyond what what we used to look at the world in the '60s and the '70s and the '80s. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, and it's interesting because, you know, I've had a long-standing relationship with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And look, I'm a conservative guy like you, Joe. I mean, you and I have the same politics. We agree on everything. And, but I'm telling you that this relationship with the Dalai Lama has changed my life on these particular issues. He endorsed this book. And one of the things that he told me is that, look, that the secret to lasting satisfaction as you age is not trying to get everything you want. It's learning to want the things that you have. And this book is full of ideas like this that are from ancient Western wisdom, ancient Eastern wisdom, neuroscience, social science, and it all comes together in a, a strategic plan. Because look, we all deserve to get happier as we get older, but we have to know how to do it. Wishing is not enough. You got to do the work. I think I Arthur, Arthur buried the lead here. Well, yeah. The real did. path to happiness, a direct line to the Dalai Lama. Well, yeah. 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 Who's got a better, yeah. who's got a better word than the Dalai great. Lama? The I, I mean, Arthur, great. Great. Yes. Arthur yes. seriously, we're sitting here, we're in morning show, and suddenly we're transported to listening no. to Bill Murray on Caddyshack. Like, you know the Dalai Lama. Exactly. Why didn't you tell us that up front, man? Yeah, I should have. I should have. As the Dalai Lama says, well, you know, I'll tell you what. We can all be like the Dalai Lama. From now, I'm going to call you His Holiness Joe Scarborough. No. No. Although I'm reliably, I'm reliably no, told that the Dalai Lama yeah, in his private thing. time is a little like a monkey on cocaine. So but this no, is really great, it. Arthur. Thank you for okay. sharing this. This book everyone should take a look at. I'm wondering if there's a difference Thanks. with men and women in the advice, but we'll talk more. Yeah, uh, actually, it's interesting. I, I do talk about that, and it turns out that our brains are our brains and our hearts are our hearts. We have a little bit slightly different dynamics in the course of our lives typically, but the truth is we can all take away, we can all subtract to find ourselves. We can all find our second curve. And for every single person, happiness is love. Full stop. I love it. End of story. The new book is it. From Strength to Strength, Finding Success, Happiness, and Deep Purpose in the Second Half of Life. Arthur Brooks, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Really thank do. Thank you, Mika.
Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.